Hi everyone and welcome to It Is My Life Show. My name is Felicity. Firstly, It Is My Life Show is about relationship and with special focus on domestic and sexual violence. These are topics close to my heart. I tell you why. Because I have been through it and so many other women have been through it and many more women and men as well and children are going through it. So I decided with my partners to do something about this and having this show, we believe, will help educate people on healthy, unhealthy and abusive relationship and what to do to avoid abuse in relationship and what to do when you're in it and how to get out of it safely. Because if you've been through abuse, you will know you wouldn't want your enemy to go through it. So today, there's a guest in the studio to share her own story with you. Along the show, I will share my own story and I can tell you how to get all of my story together later in the show. But I wanted you to hear from somebody else who's been through abuse so that you know it's not just my own experience to judge with. This lady, she's been through abuse and she's now successful because anybody can go through it and become successful as well. So today I have in the studio Margaret to share her story. Margaret, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. Can I just say, it's, it feels, I feel very comfortable with you because you understand my story and like I, I know a bit what you've been through. Yeah. So let's begin from the top. What kind of abuse did you go through? Okay. Um, in my marriage, I went through mental abuse. I went through physical abuse and I went through I went through emotional and financial abuse. So when did this abuse start? Did you date this man for a long time? We or dated what? for seven years, but I didn't pick up on any of those things during the dating. When for me, he was he was Mr. Wonderful during dating was buying me gifts, to swept me off my feet, to take me out, he'll listen to me, he'll talk to me, he cared about me. But um, for seven years, the moment I, we said I do, it was a different story. Because the next day after marriage, he called me and said, um, do you realize that a lot of women in this country, they believe they have equal rights with their wives? I said, what do you mean by that? They believe they have equal rights with their husbands? Yes. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, um, it's all about women equality in this country and he's not going to have it in this marriage. That decision-wise, he's going to make 90% of the decisions and I'll be making 10%. And that was a day after we got married, he told me that. So literally, rules came down a day after you said, mm -hmm. I do. And he lived up to it. He lived up to it because his mother lived with us right from the beginning. Um, she moved in with us. She said she wanted to help us move into a new house. And then she moved their things in and she stayed. Okay. And um, she made my life very, very difficult because when you get married, you want honeymoon. And there was no honeymoon. She made my life difficult. There was nothing I did that was correct. I couldn't clean the house properly. I couldn't cook properly. If I cooked for my husband, she would tell me, is that what you're going to cook for him? He's not eating that. She'd go into the kitchen and she'd cook something else. This went on for about, say, five years. So would he eat... His mom's food in preference instead would, of eating instead would, of your would, one. Yeah, he would he would eat his mom's food. Or if I cooked, he would say, "Oh, you're not cooking as well as mom. Mom, can you cook me this?" Right. So after a while, I was like, "What am I here for?" But I did. I I just felt it's just you know everybody says marriage is you know marriage. You it's go forever. You marriage. You go through patchy periods in marriage. Yes. In the beginning of marriage, it's always patchy. I always told myself it's going to get better and get better and get better, but it never did get better. You know, I wanted to ask. You said you were dating for seven years yeah. before you got married and yeah. then the abuse started. Yeah. I'm just imagining seven years of dating. Were you living in separate countries or was it long no, distance we, relationship no, or what? We were living oh. very close to it, very, very close to So how often were you seeing, I'm just thinking we how he to, was able to hide all this from you. We used to see you. each other a lot because we, att we met at church, we attend the same church. Oh my goodness. So even when we're not going out, I would see him at church and we'd talk at church and everything. So we weren't really that close. Yeah, I knew him since it was since I was 14 and he was like I'm 21 oh my goodness so it's this someone is like I knew child or sweetheart and it was almost like you know you felt someone I've known all my life oh. there's nothing new for me yeah. to know about him oh my but goodness <laughs> 
probably you were so in love, you just didn't notice the signs. I, there are some signs that, you know, tell to signs. Tell me, but I know, the only thing I noticed during the dating is when I mentioned about learning how to drive, it was like, it, it, it didn't take any interest in it whatsoever. So it wasn't it supportive says, don't, don't, don't worry, don't worry about do. all that yet. We'll do that later. And I thought, okay. okay, we'll do it later. Okay, so once you got married, so how long, well, basically you just told me, is a day after getting married, the rules came down. The rules came down. So, so now you've experienced, you experience, was it big, after that, then did you have like, have like name calling or was it then got to physical it was name calling there was nothing i did that was correct i told you already when yes. i tried to cook or anything mm -hmm. when i tried to challenge his decision you know if you want to change ch it would literally make decisions concerning my children without yeah. telling me it will call up the schools and tell the schools yeah um they're not coming on the tr on the on the trip for whatever, whatever reason without even discussing it with me it would change my children's nurseries without telling me about it. How did that make you feel? Unwanted and un not important, basically. I just felt as if I was just like a, just a mirror on the wall, really. <laughs> just oh a goodness. piece of furniture, mm -hmm. to be honest. So when this started, you mentioned, did you challenge him? Or did there you have like arguments? When I would say, you know, I don't understand this. Why are you doing this? I mean, we're married. You should discuss things with me. That's when the physical abuse started because he didn't like me challenging him. Mm -hmm. He didn't like me questioning his authority. And absolutely every decision he would just make, he didn't ever tell me anything. He didn't tell me anything. So when the abuse started, did you call the police when, when it got physical? When it became physical, at first I didn't. I just thought it was just one of those things. It's not going to happen again. When it kind of happened repeatedly, then I called the police. And? Unfortunately, when I called them, they would come in and say, you know what happened? And then they'll say, um, can we check? Where did he hit you? We can't see any mark on your body. Basically, no bruise. So there's no bruise. So there's then, nothing we can do. I said, but you're talking about no bruise. How about mental abuse then? You know, how do you deal with that? I mean, mental and emotional abuse, you don't see any physical don't bruises see any, or any scars. Physical. They're hurt as much and they're damaging as much as the physical ones. Yes. So people have to be, to be mindful yeah. of that. that so just the police just kept telling me, sorry, there's nothing we can do. But there was once when they took him away mm -hmm. for, um, for a day. He, he stayed there for the night. He came back home again. And it was the same story again. And continued. It just, it just continued. So I wanted to know how this affected your children and how many children did you, uh, do you have with him? Okay. I have four children with him. Mm -hmm. um, there was a point where my first daughter said, why are you letting daddy treat you this way? How old was she at this time? About six. Imagine. Yeah, about six. She was able to, she, she to recognize see, yeah. that this she was not acceptable was behavior. Not, yeah, she did. Was it like she witnessed the physical abuse? She did. She did witness once where he flung me across the city. She did witness that. And um, she, she asked me questions, but I couldn't answer her back because I didn't really know what to say to her, to be honest. You didn't I know didn't how know, to cover up. I didn't know how to cover up. I didn't know what to say to her. Mm -hmm. But I knew that she could see things. The others were quite young and they wouldn't, you know, say much. Though as they got older, I know they'd become upset and they would see me and daddy haggling all the time and they'll be crying, um, obviously, because they're not in a, in a happy environment. Mm -hmm. They would just cry and, and that's the only way they can sort of like deal with it. What did you do to protect these children from this abuse? <sighs> I, I don't know, funnily enough, he, he had, like, when he came to his children, he, he wouldn't let anything touch his kids. He didn't abuse the children? He, did, he didn't. He didn't. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let anything touch his kids, apart from the fact that he's, an Af he's African and he believes in the smack, you know, smack any mm -hmm. children. The children does anything. It's called discipline. Yeah, mm -hmm. he would smack them. Sometimes he would sex and play, but I just put that down to that's the African... You know, way of, way of, of discipline, and mm -hmm. you know, um, but in terms of like, apart from the discipline, mm -hmm. there wasn't any. I didn't see any, you know, any abuse. He didn't abuse his children. Very, very protective of his, mm -hmm. very protective of his children. Okay, give me an example of what will trigger a situation where he will hit you. What will have to happen for him to just hit you? Mm. I would say. It's more if, if he said something to me and I answered him back. Like if he tells you to do yeah, something? if he says something and I answer him back and I'll say, you know what, maybe we can do it later or maybe can we do it this way, please? Mm -hmm. he, would, he, would, he would not have that. He would not have that. Anything that challenges his authority, he would, he would hate at me. He would hate me. 
it would hit me. Um, if you say, did you, if did I you fight to, back? I've never tried to fight back because I was scared that it would get worse. Really? I've never tried to fight back because to me, it's like he's a man and he'll beat me up anyway. Is it much bigger than you or do you think he's stronger than you? Not much, or? much bigger, but I know he's stronger than me. It's not much, much bigger. So you just, you just foot. take it? He's six foot and a bit. He'll hit me, I'll, I'll just kind of like stand there, do whatever he wants to do and kind of like run away and make sure he doesn't try and, try and do it again. Was his mom around while he was physically abusing you? Did she ever witness any of this abuse? He wasn't physically abused towards me when his mom was around. Okay. He wasn't when she was around. So it was just the emotional and, and other kind of abuse? I don't know whether it had anything to do with his, his mom moving out of the house. I don't know whether that was what triggered it. The physical abuse, yeah. but when she left, he um, he did become, yeah. Did you encourage him to ask the mom to leave to uh, to move out because you weren't comfortable having her around, I or did. because she was interfering said, in your relationship? I said, you know, this is the beginning of our marriage, and we do need to get to know each other. She shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. He would say things like, "Well, my mom went through a lot." Um, when she was married to my dad, mm -hmm. you put her through a lot and I just want to look after her. Mm -hmm. And I thought like, what, at my expense? Mm -hmm. So that used to be his excuse all the time. All I want to do is look after her mm -hmm. until a family member finally said she shouldn't be there. She's interfering, she needs to go. Was it his own family member? It was his elder sister. That right, who said, that said mom that has to go. to go. Which is very good. I'm totally, I'm totally pleased to hear that because most of the times, the family member tend to support their own, um, their, own yeah. their own person, yeah. relative. But she's totally being sensitive, like, um, which is a good thing. The elder sister never, su never supported any of his abuse because she knew about it. She never supported. Did it. you complain to her, or did she just she got know to how know? To she got to know through other people. I never called her up and said, "This and this and this is what's happening." Because I didn't, because I felt she would support him anyway. Yes, yeah. But when she did find out about it, she never supported them. She used to call him up and say, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. But Did she help you in any way? Him. Did she help me in any way? Um, she did, because there was one issue that happened um, between us, which I can't remember like exactly, exactly yes, yeah, what yeah. it was. And then um, she got to know about it and she called him and said, um, if my husband did that to me, I wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. So you need to stop that, don't do that. Fantastic, that's so good. Somebody else looking out for a victim here regardless if that person or the perpetrator or the abuser is their own sibling yes. or relative, totally mm -hmm. nice. So when you when this started, you, you mentioned you didn't you, call, you didn't call the police at first, you called I the police much first. later. Did you get help with, diff, did you go for counseling to resolve issues or mm -hmm. marriage? No, no, no. A lot of time I'll tell him that, you know, we have a lot of issues, mm -hmm. let's go for counseling to deal with this so that we can deal with the issues that we have. You see, for counseling, counseling for what? So he didn't believe he had a problem? A or he didn't believe your marriage was, was not going Probably. right? He felt that you have a perfect marriage? He, felt that he didn't think there was anything wrong with what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He didn't think there was anything wrong with the marriage. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to go for counseling? I don't need counseling. I wanted to ask because a lot of people think that abuse happens in relationship when the woman does not obey rules. <laughs> Which <laughs> abuse for people who know what abuse is about, abuse has nothing to do with obeying rules. Abuse has to do with control and power, power and control. So let me ask you then: Did you obey all the rules it set to have its perfect marriage, perfect per perfect household? Did you obey all the rules? I had to obey most of them in the end. I had, to, I had to live with not having a say in the bringing up of my children. I had to live with that because that's the way he wanted it mm -hmm. and that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. I, I, at first I used to think, am I actually a house girl rather than a wife? Am, mm -hmm. I, am I an up here? Just looking after the house, looking after the kids, cooking, coming back home. But you know, mm -hmm. is that, I used to tell him, is that what I am? Am I a house girl? Am I an up here? He just look at me and laugh. Before the abuse started or before you actually got married, what kind of person would you describe yourself that you were? Before. Before you got married? Very confident. Very confident. Um, ambitious. Mm -hmm. Caring. Honest. Um, and when you got married, what happened? Oh, my confidence dwindled. Once the abuse started, <laughs> is it? Did, it did dwindle. A lot of like name calling. What are you doing that for? You're never going to get in the way. You never can make, you can't do anything with yourself. 
I've been dying to ask you this question. I can see, I'm just, first time I saw you, I saw, I saw a picture of you, and when I saw you live, I just thinking, wow, she's so beautiful. <laughs> and I mean, your picture does you no know, justice, really. And has he ever called you ugly? No, it's never called me ugly. Oh, you're so lucky. It's never I've been called, called ugly. Wow. <laughs> and so many other beautiful women out there who've been abused have been called ugly, and that's made them feel like they're just so worthless. Yeah. Like you've said, the house girl, you, you, you're nothing. When you got married, were you working? I, yes, I was. You had a job? Yes, I was working. Did you have banking. to leave your job to look after the children? I did, we, I did for a while. You um, were working with the children? Yeah, 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 yeah for a while, um, I did. I, my first daughter, um, when she was about one, one years old, I went back to work. Because mm -hmm. his mom was in the house and she kept telling me, ah, you know, in any case, she goes, I'm here, you've got the whatever, I'm here. I mean, if you want to look after the child, give the child to me and go, which was fine. Mm -hmm. So I was going to work, I was going to work. But I noticed when I went back to work, you know, the relationship became sour again. Why? It would say things like, why do I need to work? Why do I have to go to work? Why do I have to whatever? It would, sometimes it would turn up in my workplace and goes, oh yeah, you got, you're coming home now. I think you're coming home to come and do what? I'm at work. It just, I didn't understand. I was working before we got, we were, when we were dating. And that was, I was fine? Work, yeah, I was working, you know, for, it's Barclays now, but it used to be Woolwich then. Mm. I was working then while we were dating, and he, you know, he didn't have any issues with it. But um, obviously he had in his mind that once I got married, I would stop working. But he, he didn't come out with it, you know, in the obvious way. When mom now left our house, he now used to play around with child life, with the childcare. You know, I'll how do you mean? I'd be on my way out to work. It taken. He's already dropped the. He would normally drop the kids at the mine and then go to work. Mm -hmm. I'll be on my way out to work. You know, he knows the time when I leave home. He'll bring the kids back and says, "Oh yeah, um, the miner can't have them today." Um, she says, "Did it?" I said. But I spoke Just to her yesterday. Just to prevent you from going to work. Yeah, I said, but I spoke to her yesterday. There was no problem. She goes, "Well, da, 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 da. he did that constantly." And obviously my manager didn't like that much, you know, mm -hmm. calling up and saying, can't go into work, I'll go into work. And plus the, the problems I had at home as well mm -hmm. affected me at work. I was constantly crying at work, you know. Definitely. So there was a point where I said, well, the kids are young, let's leave work for a while and come back to work. Mm -hmm. Once they get a little bit older, then you can go back to work. Then I can go back to work. There's an issue I want to touch here, which I wanted to know how it affected your marriage. I know you were diagnosed later. Of, of having bipolar. Yes. You did tell me how that affected your relationship. How did I? <laughs> I don't, it's it's a hard, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Because bipolar means that you're suffering from a, a like a mood a mood swing. Mm -hmm. It means your moods can be high and sometimes it can be too low. Mm -hmm. So that's bipolar. But what I used to find, what I remembered most of the time is, um, it would it would irritate me. It would really, really, really irritate me. And when I try to explain this to people, they don't really understand. But mm -hmm. what irritating as in, if I go into the kitchen, I cook something for him. Oh, it's not good enough. Somebody, I'm about to make a phone call. Go, why are you making that phone call for? Mm -hmm. Sort of like when someone just would constant, just constantly would be getting on your nerves, mm -hmm. getting on your nerves. And if you're not the type, is to, this before he, before you were diagnosed? That's or after. after. That's so, so once he knew you were diagnosed, then it was it was not it, it was, was plain and it, it would it would it would irritate me. It would irritate me. It's like, well, what's going on? Do, 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 do. And once I um I answer back, it will call the mental institution, ask them to come and pick me up. So literally, what he was doing was do something to irritate you and get you in a state where he can call. The mental institution to come and take and you them and, and blame them and blame the whatever and he does bipolar yeah the, so that's the issue i had with him and that was just that was constantly constantly it's something he, he, he used to do that all the time um my my father said um he knows you very well and it's plain plain on what he knows about mm -hmm. you so when you reported this abuse, well, after you were diagnosed, did it have any effect on how he was treated? 
Did they like believe you? Did they oh, think when that? I, you mean when I spoke to the? When you called the police after yeah. you were abused, yeah. after you've been diagnosed, yeah. did they believe you or did they think that you were imagining things? They didn't. They did. They wouldn't say anything, but they took no action anyway. But did he tell them of your diagnosis after masking then? He didn't. He, yes, he did. Was once he said, "Oh, she's not well. She's 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 gonna be okay." Ah. That was a, yeah. Those a, a few times you say, "Oh no, she's not well, but she'll be okay very soon." So when, when these people come to take you away to the mental institution or whatever, how long were you there for? Did he come to see you? Sometimes I'm there for months. Yeah, sometimes I'm there for months. He will come, he will bring food, he will go. He will bring food, he will go. He will bring food, he will go. I'm there for months. Sometimes I'm there for just a few days. And my children will come, he will bring the children to come and visit me. Can I just say right now, I learned you told me earlier that you're running a business and you're happy now. You are, your, your condition is well controlled, isn't it? Yes. Has anybody else had any issues about your condition? Not in the last, uh, how long have I left them? Five years since I left them. Since no, you left him? No issue, never been into hospital. Never been into hospital since I left them. So, so how long were you, did you experience that? How, well, how long were you, in the marriage with him after your diagnosis? Mm -hmm. 2000, I was diagnosed 2006. Yeah. So I was in the marriage six years. So after you were diagnosed, how long more were you there before you left? Four years. I'm just asking to work out something here to Four know years. if yeah. this has any influence, if the relationship or the abuse has any influence on your condition. And since you've left five years now, you've not had any. No cause to be in hospital. No, no. I'm totally happy for you and you're doing well with your business. You've yes, run an, you, well. What kind of business do you run now? I'm an events manager. Mm -hmm. So I do children's party entertainment. Mm -hmm. I do party decorations mm -hmm. and I do event planning. Fantastic. All and social events. And how's that going? It's going very well and I'm enjoying it. Fantastic. Are you in touch with your children? Yes, I am. You are a terrific lady, you must say. I totally applaud you for what you do and for your courage. A lot of women do not have the courage to leave abusive relationship, and a lot of women have been killed. So I'm quite happy that even with any diagnosis, condition you've had, you've had the courage to, to say, no, this is not right. I know what is right and what is best for you and for your children. So thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for I wish me. you all success with your business thank and your you. life and with any relationship you make now. Thank you very much, Margaret. Thank you. And now it's time for Felicity Recommends. Today, what I'm going to recommend is for people to actually know the meaning of domestic violence. Domestic violence and domestic abuse, like I define it, is a pattern of aggressive and or controlling behavior from one adult from one person to the other in a family setting before it used to be defined as people in intimate relationship no really it has to do with people in a family setting where the man or the husband can abuse the child or the partner or the house help the woman can be the abuser herself or actually children abusing their parents or relatives so any of these kind of abuse either which can be physical emotional mental or psychological financial social isolation and any form of or sexual any kind of abuse like this is not acceptable this is what domestic violence is domestic violence is caused by power and control that is the main issue here somebody wanting to control the other person to gain power over them to control them to have them do their will instead of their own will you cannot force yourself upon somebody so what i recommend to do instead of using these means to, to control someone i teach that the easiest way to control in quote if at all you have to control someone is to love them really love them and because when you love someone and show it express it guess what you controlling them because they will do your bidding easily effortlessly and with love and even pleasure 
So if you really want to have someone do your will, love them, show them that you love them, not be abusing them. I would also recommend you get a copy of my book called It Is My Lab and I'm in Charge, which is about my own experience of domestic abuse. It will help you understand a bit more about where I'm coming from and why we have this show and also will help inspire people and transform lives. You can get information about this book and any of the shows or any recommendations from our website, it is my lab, and I'm in charge.com. Until next time, live with love. <laughs>